I try to imagine a fellow smarter than myself, and then I try to think, what would he do? Charge up your axons, ready your receptors, and shift your lobes into upper beta phase. You are listening to Smart Drug Smarts, the podcast dedicated to helping you optimize your brain with the latest breakthroughs in neuroscience, neurotropics, and psychopharmacology. Hello and welcome to Smart Drug Smarts. I am your host, Jesse Lawler. I'm excited to bring you our third installment of this podcast. We're already up to three. How the, how the time flies. If you can stick around until the very end of this episode, I'm going to tell you how to get something. This is our first ever giveaway on this podcast. If you were listening last week, you heard the extremely educated and insightful and gracious Dr. Carol Greenwood from the University of Toronto, who is the co-author of the ebook Mindful, which is a recipe book for people who want to eat recipes that benefit not just their body, but their brain. Carol has given us the download codes for her ebook, so a couple of listeners are going to be getting a free copy of that book, which is totally awesome, and I will tell you how to get that at the end of the episode. In the meantime, we're, we're doing something a little bit different and possibly even controversial and possibly even just downright stupid on this episode. Um, well, anyway, the, the way it came about is, is this. Apparently, scheduling people on short notice, especially around the holidays, is, is not, not easy. And, and who'd have thought that? I mean, I guess I should have known that. I'm a grown-up. But anyway, uh, we, we kind of got behind the gun a little bit on getting a interviewee with a PhD following their name scheduled. And so I was kind of grasping for straws a little bit. And then I started struck on something, which is totally awesome. So a lot of people listening might be, you know, you're interested in smart drugs, but maybe you haven't actually tried any smart drugs yet, and you're just wondering, what's it like? You know, most of the drugs that people do in our society are things like alcohol that make you stupider instead of smarter. And it might be weird to think like, okay, well, what, what exactly is going on when you take a smart drug? What does that feel like? It's kind of a qualitatively different sort of experience that we're talking about here. But what is that experience like? So what I found for you this week is a virgin brain. This guy, our test subject, has never taken any sort of smart drug, he's never taken any sort of drug drug, and I, I think the limit of his um, experience of that stuff is probably you know, breathing fumes in a gas station and maybe having a glass of red wine with spaghetti every now and then. Uh, anyway, so, so totally virgin brain has agreed to do 200 milligrams of modafinil while hanging out with me, and I'm going to sort of follow up with him you know, several hours into the experience and see what he has to say about this. It's his first time on any sort of smart drug, and I don't know, it, it, something interesting might come out of it. We will not refer to this gentleman by name. He's asked to remain safely anonymous. Uh, in case I guess he gets you know fan mail or death threats or whatever you weirdos out there are going to do. So we're going to refer to him not by his real name, which is but every time I would be saying instead I'm going to say anyway. So so that's that's what's going on here. But before we get to let's do this week in neuroscience. Smart drug smarts this week in neuroscience. So Harvard Men's Health Watch has apparently retained the copywriting services of the ghost of Dr. Seuss. They recently published an article that was entitled, Mental Strain Helps Maintain a Healthy Brain. They didn't actually put an exclamation point on the end, but I'm sure they thought about it. The article itself was about what one can do to help maintain the cognitive reserve that Dr. Carol Greenwood talked about in last week's episode. If you remember the gist of that, it was basically that during the first half of your life, you're building up this dense network of neural connections all over your brain. And then during the second half of your life, if you're not careful, those connections can kind of start petering out and dying off. And eventually you really start noticing the lack of that. And that's you know what turns into senior dementia and Alzheimer's and, and other bad stuff that none of us want to experience. So this article is about what you can do to keep that from happening, basically to keep all the uh, you know, branches in your, in your neural trees and networks very strong. And those four things that they cite are, one, be a lifelong learner, continue learning stuff all throughout your life. Uh, two, kind of a corollary to the first one, in fact, they all are, is strain your brain. Don't, don't think that by sitting back and watching a Discovery Channel episode for half an hour every couple days that you're actually you know, really going to be doing the best you can for your brain. You want to be learning something difficult. You want to be you know, playing a game of chess against a grandmaster or learning a new language or, or really, really doing something that, that's mentally challenging to the point where it, it takes some work. If it's easy, then you're not really doing much for yourself. It's, it's, you know, the metaphor is the same as exercise. If you're not a little bit sore at the end of it, then you're probably really not doing anything to build the muscle. That, that's number three, actually, on their list is get uncomfortable. Comfortable. Basically, go outside your comfort zone in the sorts of mental tasks you're doing. If you're just sticking to what feels comfortable to you, you're probably not really doing much to help yourself out. And the fourth one is to be social. There's been enough research showing that social isolation, especially among seniors, tends to be strongly correlated with people kind of falling off the cliff as far as their mental abilities. 
And so really, you know, maintaining close social networks, you know, hanging out with friends, making new friends and, and, and being socially involved is another really, really powerful thing that people can do to keep their brains healthy. So those are the four tips. Uh, again, be a lifelong learner, strain your brain, get uncomfortable and be social. Smart Drug Smarts. So in significantly less national level news, but still very exciting to me, we got a couple of customer reviews on iTunes for the podcast from the first couple episodes, some five-star reviews. So thank you. Thank you very, very much for that. Uh, one was from Dan who said, I've been looking for a solid podcast about smart drugs for a long time, and it looks like Jesse might just be the guy to deliver it. First two episodes are jam-packed with great information, and based on the information I heard, I even made a purchase of a new supplement to try. The show is super professional. Blah, 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 how professional can it be when I can't even pronounce the word professional? Uh, anyway, thank you, Dan. And the Panama Kid said, This is a subject that I've been very interested in recently. It amazes me that a supplement can make me so much more productive. The Panama Kid did not mention which supplement it is he's been taking, so we're, uh, we're left to guess, you mysterious Panamanian you. Anyway, thanks for the reviews, and yeah, let this be moral encouragement for anybody else that feels like taking the five minutes to go into iTunes and write a review. It would be super appreciated by yours truly. Smart Drug Smarts, the podcast so smart, we have smart in our title, twice. Okay, so we're actually recording now. I'm, I'm here live with... He is our experimental test subject. It's about, uh, what is it, 11 o'clock in the morning, which, which sounds like it's late in the morning, but is a conspicuously late sleeper from what I understand. So, uh, so what, you've been up for about a half an hour? Yeah, I would say about half an hour to 45 minutes. I was telling the audience earlier, we get kind of in the, in the pregame analysis, that, that I think that you're a totally virgin brain. Maybe you had a couple of glasses of wine at some point in your life, um, but, but that, that's kind of it, right? Like, I mean... Um, in terms of uh, smart drugs, well, hey, jump jump in on the mic here. Okay. Oh, wow, wow. are you like a crack addict or methamphetamines or something else that I don't know about? No, I mean, I mean, I do drink uh, alcohol occasionally, not a lot of it. I have had a Ritalin once or twice oh, really? a couple of years ago. Yeah, once or, I had, I was dating a girl who um, was subscribed Ritalin because of ADHD, and I was interested in what the effects would be. So I took I took a little bit. Uh, it wasn't a lot. People take anywhere between 50 milligrams of modafinil and 200 milligrams of modafinil for productivity purposes, depending on whether they just want to make sure they're awake or they really want to kind of dive into a super productivity zone. Uh, being the crazy test monkey that he is, is going to take the full 200 milligram ride today. I'm telling him this now. I didn't actually give him this uh, preemptive warning on, on the relative dosages. But but again, I mean, modafinil is something that people take. It's an anti-narcolepsy drug originally. It's to keep you from falling asleep. It's not even 11 o'clock in the morning here yet, so falling asleep should not be high on the list of priorities for right now. Drug me. Yeah, we'll, we'll put in dramatic music at this point. And, and me saying something smart. One one small step for man, one giant drug for mankind. I don't know. Okay. And I'll say something smart after taking the smart drug. Rewind. Um, okay, so obviously I'm not the one taking smart drug because I was just recorded a 10 minute conversation uh, or thought I did without actually pressing record. So as the designated person on smart drugs and uh, with lots of smart things to say, I now present to you uh, who is two and a half hours into his 200 milligrams of modafinil day. How you doing? Uh, I'm overall feeling pretty good. Man, a few words. Uh, I can tell you what I feel like now. Yeah, tell me what you feel like now. Well, normally, like today I didn't get very much sleep. Last night I didn't get very much sleep. And I woke up groggy to an alarm clock. And normally after that and then eating a big breakfast like we did, uh, I feel very tired during the afternoon for, for an hour, two or three. And I have, uh, there's no feeling like that whatsoever. Is that modafinil? Is it something else? I don't know. But uh, I, I don't feel the grogginess. I feel alert in a sense, more alert than I am usually. I feel engaged with the discussion especially. I feel engaged in, in doing something uh, and in discussing ideas. Yeah. That's been very discussion oriented. I have been. I, 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 I have been very chatty. That. Although I think most people would agree I'm normally kind of chatty. I mean, actually, that was one of the reasons I was kind of stoked is having you as a um, sort of a virgin brain to use for this. Because it's like, I, I, I know you are. He knows a lot of big words. Um, so so I, I think it's very... Soliloquy. There we go. <laughs> There's an example. What Even... else do I feel now? I, I have a slight headache. Well, I wouldn't say it's a headache. It's Do you know that feeling you get like in your temple where you're like, oh, I almost have a headache. Like you can feel like, uh, I could get a headache but you don't quite have it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, not really, but... Uh, it's like the precursor to a headache. It's like the, a slight pressure in your temples. Like, oh, it doesn't hurt, 
but you know something's happening there. That's right. what I feel now. Now, is that me not getting the amount of sleep I need? Is that, you know, modafinil? Is it both? Is it... Right, or the, the alignment of Mars and Jupiter and all that stuff. Because basically what we're doing right now is entirely unscientific, but hopefully it makes is. for a somewhat interesting podcast. It is. What, what you... Um, a, a follow-up to this, a good follow-up to this would be, okay, you actually have a subject. You have several subjects. You get three, four, whatever people. Maybe you do this for three days and you give them a placebo for, well, let's say two of those days. And you give them the real thing for one of those days. They don't know which day. And bum, then bum, you bum. record. And then you have, you not only have one person, you have a couple people. But that would be a more, that would be a more comprehensive take on it. And you'd be, you'd be able to get, start getting actual data points. Yeah, but those kind of studies, I mean, that takes like university research grants and stuff like that. And we're, we're just a modest podcast in our third episode. I mean, geez, man, what are you trying to do to me here? I'm trying to bankrupt you, actually. Shit. Okay, so uh, here we are. We're we're six hours in. Which, uh, on the one hand, I was thinking, well, m- maybe maybe the the moment is past for this being a modafinil influenced uh, interview at this point. You can just kind of give us your your follow up thoughts. But then uh, I did a little bit of reading. I should have done that before this whole thing started, probably, and we we drugged you. But um, it turns out that the half life of modafinil, the point that like half of it has left your bloodstream is 15 hours. So, which doesn't mean you won't be able to sleep okay. for that, that time, but like, I mean, it's like, it's, it's a long half-life. It takes a while for your liver to get this out of your system. But things, your liver gets- it would be good to know before you drug up your friends. Y- y- your liver gets almost all of it out of you. That makes me wonder what the effects on the liver would be long-term, but you, I think the research says it's pretty pretty safe. Uh, yeah, there there are some counter indications with modafinil as far as uh, what they say, horrible things that might happen to you. Common side effects include back pain, headache. You mentioned earlier that you might've had a little bit of a headache. Uh, nausea, feeling nervous, a stuffy nose, diarrhea, feeling anxious. I mean, if all these things had happened to you, then you would definitely feel anxious. Uh, upset stomach and, of course, trouble sleeping. Um, and then serious side effects include a serious rash, not one of those kind of comical rashes, a uh, serious allergic reaction involving the liver or blood cells, hives, mouth sores, bis- blistering or peeling skin, swelling of the face, eyes, lips, tongue, legs, or throat, trouble swallowing or breathing, fever, shortness of breath, yellowing of the skin or the whites of the eyes, and finally, dark urine. I am uh, I am so glad you didn't tell me about any of those before drugging me up. Yeah, uh, um, me too, actually. I, I would have felt... Um, this, this reminds me of my days when I, uh, when I was much younger. In high school, I was working in a pharmacy, and they would have these drugs uh, that would have all these side effects. I read the side effects just you know, to pass the time. And my favorite was a drug. It was that was his pastime. That reading, was reading that drug was side effects. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, so there was like one drug, and it was used to treat something like a, a cold. What the One of the listed side effects, like when you read down the list, was possible death. <laughs> and, and you would compare the possible side effect to actually what it was Trying solving. Cure, yeah. yeah, and you'd be like, who in their right mind would ever take this? Yeah, d- no, no death at all. It's a zero, ch- zero chance of death. Um, one other thing, though, the 200 milligrams that we gave you, I was kind of thinking 200 milligrams was kind of a, a large dose, but it's actually mm-hmm. kind of a middle-of-the-road dose as far Is as it? what's actually um, given to people. They were talking about some, some large doses that they have given, like, military tests. It, it was something like they did tests on the military guys to see if they could stay up for, like, 88 hours straight. And they spontaneously combusted, they, right? They all, every, to a man, they all spontaneously combusted. So they don't do that anymore. Yeah, one study of helicopter pilots suggested that 600 milligrams of modafinil given in three doses can be used to keep pilots alert and maintain their accuracy at pre-deprivation levels for 40 hours without sleep. So you're saying I can go out probably uh, rabbit hunting, for example, with a rifle for 40 or 50 hours on this stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean why, why do you want to kill bunnies, man? Uh, I, I hate anything cute and fluffy, of course. Oh, okay, fair enough. This is this is brain on drugs. Uh, he seems okay. Have you been productive during this time? Have you been over at your computer doing something? What have you been up to? I've been working. I mean, I think my level of productivity has just as much to do with not only executing, but also are you executing on the right things? Are you uh, tackling the right problems? So that's a whole other side of it that modafinil or any drug like that would not address. Yeah, um, I, th- I think you could very much spin your wheels in the wrong direction. I kind of feel like modafinil is one of those things. It's, it's like you, you get more interested in whatever it is that you're working on. So you need to make sure that what you're working on is, is the right thing. because And you, and you kind of want to make that decision, I think, before you take the modafinil. Because it's like once your level of average interest in whatever is in front of you goes up, you're not going to be able to make kind of a baseline decision of whether this is worth your attention to begin with. So make the, is this worth my attention to begin sure. with decision before you pop the drug? And, and then uh, you know, let the drug work for you and giving you some extra oomph down that road. And I would say for myself, I mean, I felt fairly engaged with my work. 
I mean, I haven't been as distracted. Like I haven't felt a pressing desire to check Facebook every 10 minutes or my email every, you know, 15 minutes. And um, it actually is a little bit unusual. I've been working this afternoon and I just feel like, oh, okay, I'm just working. Uh, I wouldn't say it's an overwhelming feeling, but, um, yeah, but it's there. Do you think now, if you didn't know that you had modafinil in your system, you would realize that something's different or would it just be another day? Well, do you mean like if I just woke up and felt this way? If you just woke up and felt this way. Well, I would assume it, I was just feeling good or something. Okay. But, <laughs> I mean, if you woke up, of course, and there, nothing was done to you, I mean... You know what I mean? It's like if you woke up piss drunk and you hadn't been drinking okay. the night before, you'd be like, something's going on here. And Absolutely. It, I don't think... Probably not. Because... Uh, what I feel now is not kind of to that degree. It's not like, oh, piss drunk and you notice it. Okay, I, it's within the, what do I want to call it? What's the word I'm looking for? The Range? The range. Uh, yeah, the so, so the modafinil wasn't enough of a smart drug so he could remember the word range, folks. Uh, it's a very take complicated note. word. Two syllables. Uh, <laughs> two syllables? He can't even count to two. Range is a one syllable actually... word, dude. <laughs> You need cut, to, cut, cut, okay. That out. No, man, people need to know the modafinil does not allow you to count to two. Smart Drug Smarts. Okay, so that was the shocking end to that particular uh, little first ever experiment in drugging one of the guests of this show. I, I can't say that it won't happen again, but um, might might do things a little differently next time. Uh, anyway, hopefully it gave you some something to chew on, whether that thing you're chewing on is or isn't a modafinil pill will be up to you. I do want to extend a major, major thanks to our special mystery guest for putting himself out there in the name of science, letting us drug him in a public context and seeing where the chips fall. It was totally awesome of him to do that, and uh, hopefully we learned a thing or two, even if it wasn't quite as scientifically sound or whatever as our first couple of episodes. We'll definitely try to sort of vector back in a slightly more credible direction, but thank you for bearing with us in this minor departure here. Coming up in our ruthless listener retention gimmick, as promised, I'm going to tell you, well, let's just play the thing. Smart Drug Smarts, Ruthless Listener Retention Gimmick. And now, as I promised at the beginning of the episode, we've got three, count them, three copies of Dr. Carol Greenwood's ebook, Mindful, to give away. Again, Mindful is a recipe book for those who want to develop your brain while you eat. I've got three codes, and they're going out to three listeners who are going to be signing up for the Smart Drug Smarts mailing list at www.smartdrugsmarts.com. It so happens, totally embarrassing to me, but our mailing list is almost empty at the moment, and so I'm going to assume that it, when I check in about 10 days, anybody that's in there is in there because they heard that there's a free giveaway associated with it. They wanted to get in on that action, and they immediately went to www.smartdrugsmarts.com and signed up. So uh, yeah, about 10 days from now, I'm going to be going in, looking at the list, randomly selecting three names and those three people are going to get their very own download code for the ebook so go there and sign up it'll be well worth it if you do you're going to get some some good grub out of this that's it for this episode the show notes will be online at www.smartdrugsmarts.com including the links to anything that we mentioned here uh, which in this case is going to include some sort of link to where you can find yourself some modafinil online should you become a, uh, a willing buyer subscriber believer cult member whatever after uh, after having heard this I will be back next week with the absolute same unflagging commitment to helping you fine-tune the performance of your own brain. So have a great week, everybody. You've been listening to the Smart Drug Smarts Podcast. Visit us online at www.smartdrugsmarts.com and subscribe to our mailing list to keep your neurons buzzing with the latest in brain optimization. 